Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Our fishing reel of the day today is a, a very well used uh, Pen Fathom 15 Lever Drag LD. And uh, this one's really tough to turn, hasn't been serviced in a while, that's evident. And one of the things that uh, is going on with this reel is well, it doesn't go into free spool. As you turn the reel, you'll notice that the handle is moving. So there's something going on in there as well. And we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how it's made. We'll talk a little bit about the principles of a lever drag reel. And uh, we'll see if we can't restore this one to the way it should be uh, to, in order to take it fishing. So my guess is it's just a overused reel with lack of service. Hopefully all of that stuff can be corrected. There doesn't seem to be any broken parts, but it does seem to be a very sluggish reel. Well, while we take apart the side and exterior pieces. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you enjoy the art of reel repair, if you like to learn about fishing reels, and to see how they're made and how they come apart and how they get serviced, well, this is what the channel is all about. It's called Second Chance Tackle because we want to give reels a second chance and I want to teach you how to do it yourself. So those are the drivers behind this. You're looking at reels that come into my shop. You're basically looking over my shoulder. And uh, that's uh, one way to learn, right? It's to learn from folks that are doing it. And, uh, well, hopefully I can teach you to do it yourself. We just took off the collar. We took off the handle. We took off the handle screw. And we took off the retention ring. There's one more piece here. We're going to leave this for now. But there's a e-clip here which is holding on the main gear, which we'll take off in, in a moment. It's time to remove the side now. There's three side plate screws there, but always check underneath. As you'll find out, there's two that are underneath this reel. And, well, they got to come out in order to remove that side plate. So let's go do that right now. Lever drag reels in a small format have become very popular lately. There's been a big move to light and ultralight tackle, particularly in the salt water, and that's all been made possible by braided line. Uh, you can get the same capacity on a much smaller platform uh, if uh, you have the, the braided line as opposed to the comparable weighted monofilament. We're going to take our adjuster knob off. Next up would be the little uh, ramp shield. And we should be able to remove the, the lever itself, I guess not. Yep, there we go, the lever. And then notice that there is a plastic washer behind the lever. Now you don't have to take that off. There's nothing going on there. Also notice that there is a hex, kind of a, a bolt here. That does not get unscrewed. That, uh, that kind of stays as it is. All right, there is three screws or one screw that's holding on this. I guess we need a micro driver. Now, I haven't been inside of one of these in a while, uh, but I kind of know how to navigate the reel. If you're hesitant in terms of taking off some of these pieces, the first thing I want to recommend that you do is take a moment, go get the schematic. It's generally available on the internet. It'll be available through uh, penparts.com. And take that, uh, take your time there, get the schematic, and take a look at what you're kind of going to see, right? All right, I think we need to remove these two screws as well. I don't know, they're probably holding in the wings for this that will now allow us to open it up. But uh, it's not coming off easily, so I'm assuming those two got to go as well. When I take the screws and pieces off of these, I put them into a parts tray. That ensures that I know exactly where those pieces and parts go. That screw was longer than this screw. You need to note those as well when you do this. All right, let's see what we can do with this one. This is probably a long screw as well. And I don't know if that's holding, well, yeah, it's holding the whole thing on. Okay, well, there you go. That's the answer there. Two long screws, a short screw. The whole assembly comes out with that. So good to know. 
and uh, if I tried to pull that metal piece out, well, we would have had a broken piece that would have needed to be replaced. Okay, three screws that are holding on the balance of the case then. So we have the two screws in the back, and we have the three screws under the assembly that was held on by three very small screws. All of the business on a lever drag is done on the one side, and this is the business side of the reel. It's done by pulling in the spool from the opposing cage, and it meshes that or puts pressure on that and pulling it in with a pressure plate that acts as a clutch, much like an automobile where you're engaging the clutch of a car. So that's what you're, you're going to service there. You're going to have a drag washer, which is basically the car clutch, and you're going to have a pressure plate which uh, is going to engage. We have three screws, two screws. This side plate hopefully comes off now. There you go. All right, well, there's your business end. That's your spool. And I don't see a lot of dirt. One of my uh, basic hypotheses here was there's going to be a lot of dirt in there, but I don't see that. I see a lot of old grease and the like. Let's go ahead and take this out. On the back side, there's nothing at all going on in this reel. You have a click mechanism, that's it. You want to just make sure that it's clean. This one's clean. I don't see any excessive greases in that. You can take the three screws out and go underneath there and mop up if that's an issue, but there's no issue with this one. There's no sense to take that off. This is the business end of the spool. Here's the piece that I was referring to as a clutch. And you'll see, it's interestingly enough, that the there's plenty of grease on this one. It's sliding around. I think that's okay. I'll take the spring off that's going to compress as you pull that in. And we can go underneath here. We want to take this side out so that we can get to the bearing on the back side. There's two bearings in this reel on uh, the spool. You want to get to both of them. And I'm noticing as I'm trying to take that out, by removing these three spools that are in uh, three screws that are in that collar, is that that shaft there is a little sluggish, so it may be that that's over greased or it's got some dirt in it or well, whatever. We're going to find out in just a moment. You can kind of see the dirt and debris on this. That's I'm sure a cause of some of the sluggishness of this. It's a good place to take a picture now. You have your collar and your cases and your screws. It's always kind of safe just to knock these screws out, put them into the parts tray. I use a parts tray. It segregates all the pieces and parts. Probably a good idea to get them there because as soon as you start playing around with this stuff, generally what happens is the things start falling away. Let's take that sleeve off. Then we have a couple of bearings in here. As long as the bearings are running fine, you don't need to do anything. But I'm noticing on this, on the shaft, it's a very sticky grease that's on there. So that may have something to do with the issue. So we're going to mop that up. We have two bearings in here. We have a very flat bearing here. We'll oil that. I oil my bearings. I don't grease them. Put the grease onto the, or the oil onto the second one. I've got a shaft here that's very uh, tacky. I guess that's a good word for it. So I'm going to clean up the outside and I'm going to clean up the inside by running a cotton swab through it so that that anchors it better. There we go. All of that's going to help us with the speed of the spool and the rotation. Once I do that, so I'm going to knock the bearing out of the other side here. I want to test it. These are shielded bearings. At least this one has got a shield to it, I think, probably for the spring. Let's go ahead and clean that up. Let's reinstall. Take the, just, that belongs to one of the case screws. And as I look over there, sure enough, two of them have got it and one doesn't. So I guess somehow that got loose. All right, let's just line up our 
collar onto my parts tray and get the three of these and put those in. This is a good time while I'm kind of taking my moment or two here to install the screws. It's a good time to suggest to you that uh, I can, I'm here to help. If you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you've started a project and you've gotten stuck. Maybe you've watched another one of my videos and you're wondering about uh, some steps that I took or maybe you have a reel like Thomas here that, well, you need some attention and support but you don't want to do it yourself. Then uh, leave that in the comment section and I will try to answer that for you. All right, we've uh, done the cleanup on most of this. Put the bearing back in. And I'm going to make sure it turns nice and easy just by turning the axle shaft, which it does. All right, this one seems to have a lot of grease on it or oil, maybe. Now, these should be kept dry or close to dry. The, the grease may actually be one of the things that's causing the issue here. I'm not sure. That's wafer thin. That's a very interesting little dry washer there. But if you have too much grease on these, when you go to pull the spool in and run it against the pressure plate here, it's uh, just going to stick. This whole assembly can come out. This has got a traditional uh, dog type setup for your anti-reverse. Don't just pull it out and then guide it out. This is your assembly behind it. And well, that, that there is probably why it's not disengaging. That is a very thick kind of grease here. And if I was to bet anything, I would say that's the cause of the deterioration. Let's go ahead and take this stuff out. That's your pinion gear, your collar, and all, all we have back here is just a whole bunch of dirt and debris and grease and grime and blah blah blah. That's the cause of a lot of this sluggishness that we have. The front end of this is the clutch that's going to go over the pressure plate. The back end of this is the drive components. And that's what we're trying to take care of here. Okay, so we got a couple of things going. This has got the traditional old style ratchet and forked anti-reverse, or sometimes they're called fingered. So I'm going to get rid of all of that nonsense there. That's going to mount up top. We saw how those mount, so one goes one way, one goes the other because of the way that it rotates. So we should be able to line that up with the case. And now we're going to grab that um, e clip, take that off so we can get to the main gear. Let's uh, we can do a couple of things here. One of them is to put this back in. That's going to be your drive. You can line that up, you can sight it. This is kind of how the wings are. I just got lucky, but that's going to be how those anti-reverse dogs mesh back in on these two posts in the, ca in the cavity. You can go ahead and set that in now. And then we have our main gear, our pinion gear rather, that's going to go in. And that's holding the whole assembly in now. So we're good. The only thing we need to do here is to grease the pinion gear. So let's use fresh fishing reel grease for this. I'm using pen precision reel grease. Uh, not because it's a pen reel, but because it's fishing reel grease. 
but I guess you can't go wrong there. I'm going to take the spool now, which has the braid on it. I'm going to just reseat that back into the case because if we leave too much stuff on the table, well, there's a good chance that that uh, thing is going to get banged around and uh, it's going to be a mess. All right. So we've done the, the lower end of the case. We've done the pressure plate and the pinion gear. Time to do the main gear. As I mentioned, we have a E-clip here and we need to remove in order to get the gear out. These things are infamous for shooting. So please, as you do this, be careful, be aware of how you're taking that out. Kind of do what I'm doing here. Hold it so that you don't uh, shoot it out. And now we should be able to push the whole main gear assembly out. It's a really nice main gear assembly. Again, what I'm seeing here is just a lot of old grease, and I believe that is the cause. Especially here, you, you just, I don't know what it is, but it's been too long since this reel has been serviced. That grease is most likely accumulated a lot of dirt and salt and debris from the reel and its use in the ocean and well that's just what's gonna make, make the issue or exacerbate the issue. I'm using a WD-40 or any penetrating oil will do to clean out the case. Where does that dirt and debris come from? Well we saw the holes behind that lever dry guide that would be one way it gets in. The other way it gets in is behind the spool. That cleaned up. Let's clean it off the main gear. Main gear is very nice. Looks like a stainless gear. There is no anti-reverse bearing in, or clutch in this one. It's held on completely by those two dogs. Just looking in here, we have the bearing. And on the front end of it, we have a bushing. But there is no, uh, no AR clutch underneath there. We're gonna just go ahead and oil both of those bearings. To clean up the old grease. So much about fishing reel service and repair is just cleaning, examining the pieces and parts, getting rid of the old greases, uh, replacing any damaged parts that may be there, and then uh, just relubing and reinstalling. All right, we've got, we know that there's the bushing rides there, the burring rides there, so let's get some grease on that. Let's go ahead and put the Gear back in, push that straight down. Make sure that you can have the slot here for the e clip. And sometimes you can do this by hand, and sometimes you can't. That one we did by hand. So once you do that, give it a spin, make sure that it's doing exactly what it needs to do. And then we can go ahead and turn our attention to. Kind of loading this in now. This one's by sight. You're aiming these two holes in your anti-reverse dog for these two posts while you're meshing that main gear. Sometimes you get lucky and uh, you can pull them up. Sometimes you can't. This pick is invaluable to me in doing things like this. Right, we're pretty close on that one. Lost that one. So patience is a key. Don't try to force anything. Just you take your time. Eventually you will get it to work the way it should. Okay, we're in. I think we're in. That looks good. Let's turn the wheel and see what we got. Well, we're turning one wheel turns the other. Backing it off has got these engaging. That's the way that you set this, this up. Make sure that the face of your pressure plate is dry. If it's not dry, when it goes to engage and to uh, put pressure onto the drag washer, 
it, it won't be effective. All right, there was a spring that went over that. Now we can take our time, load in. There's a couple of uh, aligning pins that go in this. Make sure that they're in. Make sure that you have a nice tight seal all the way around. Now we can go back to our parts tray. We'll get those three screws that belong underneath here. And we'll start the reassembly process. That's one. They have a little plastic washer, as I mentioned. That's the one we found on my bench. That kind of is designed to keep the water out. And the one I found on my bench doesn't have it on there yet, so let's go ahead and put that on. Now that's, that's kind of a pen thing. You can find those little washers on just about every pen reel, uh, including their spinning reels. So be careful as you're working on an, the modern generation. You won't find these on the earlier generations. It's a whole different setup, but the ones that uh, you're working on, be careful. They are out there and they do work. Let's look through those. Right now we should be able to look at the difference already. Look at how that one is spinning versus before. So we know that that was just gum and, and like that was causing the issues there. And I'm glad that we have a nice free spool for casting now. We haven't tested to make sure that the uh, reel sits, does not turn the handle and free spool. We'll get there in a moment. There was the two smaller screws, one in the back. Again, if you were looking in your parts tray, and uh, saw screws in there and said, gee, where did they belong? Well, if you weren't taking the video along the way, uh, one of the things you can do is go to the schematic. That's a burst diagram of all the pieces and parts in the reel. It's very valuable if you are going to um, order pieces and parts. It'll tell you what the part order is and so on. But uh, you can look there and you will see the uh, orientation of the part and where it belongs. So, Alright, we've got all of that in. Now we know that we have this little ramp structure that goes in. We have a very dirty lever. Clean the inside of that out. And why I'm doing that right now is because the sometimes this lip can get over that. There's a little lip here. Sometimes that lip can get over, sometimes it can't. So it doesn't hurt to take it right now, put that on as part of the reassembly of the, the total ramp piece. Line it up, and for now that should work fine. There was two long micro screws, long and thin, one went on each side. Now I need my small screwdriver for that. And then we had one smaller screw that went in the middle. I believe that the head on that one is also different. I believe that's a, a uh, flat head versus a rounded head that's on these two on the outside. And then we'll get to the point where we can uh, get the rest of this thing going here. That's the flat head that goes in the middle. And now we need to set the free spool release mechanism, or the lever mechanism. Put it over in the neutral side where it should have a free spool. next piece up is the cup. Actually, it's the piece from the cavity. Then the cup. And what you need to do is you need to nest the studs into the ramp. Just like that.
there's a little washer that came inside and then there is the adjuster knob and that's going to go on clockwise like that all right we should have free spool notice not turning let's move it over Okay, that needs to be adjusted more, so we're going to tighten that down. I'm going to do this in the free spool mode. Casting. And now you'll notice that we have the, the spline is turning, which means that the drag is engaging. And we can go over to max drag. Come back here. Free spool. So we have solved the issue that was there with the free spool. Let's just go ahead and put the rest of the reel back together. There was this shield or plate for the handle. Let me take the handle. Tighten that down. I always start my tightening by hand. I don't want to cross strip threads in the gears. This is going to use the same wrench that a 6-0 Senator, so probably a 4-0 too. The one with the bigger screw set. I'm going to walk that down as much as I can by hand. So Allen Tani makes a wrench. This fits the, uh, the majority of the smaller reels. This fits the majority of the larger reels. And as I mentioned, this is the one for the larger reel. If you're uh, only working on one reel, you can use the tool that comes in the box. Not a big deal. If you're working on a lot of pen reels, this, um, this larger wrench, it's longer, has better leverage, has both of the screw uh, sets right on it, is a joy to, to use. All right, I think we got it. I think we got it. So let's just, we got the handle back on now. We're in free spool. You're casting away, and look at that difference between that and when we started. Going to head, throw it into a drag, crank your reel, got that going, let's go to max drag. All right, it's not holding, and that's how you need to test. Come on back, set it into free spool, a couple more turns of the button. Let's drive that to max, now you got it holding. That's your adjustment. Okay, that's your Pen Fathom 15 lever drag. It's a low profile uh, bait caster with the level drag features. It runs beautifully. And uh, now you know how to take it apart, how to service it, and how to keep it fishing for a long time to come. I hope you've enjoyed that. I, uh, to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. To everyone, uh, good luck in the uh, future fishing trips. I hope uh, from learning from this, you learn to do it yourself, and uh, I hope you enjoy the art of reel repair as much as I do. Uh, to everybody, uh, please uh, have a great day, and I wish you all great fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.